Hi guys, this is Rich with Wild Wonderful Weekends, and this is the third video in my series on map and compass land navigation. In this video, we're going to look at how to account for magnetic declination. We're going to look at how to shoot a bearing and how to find your place on a map. In the last video that I did, we looked at what a compass is and how to use it to orient your map to the terrain. But there's one more thing that we have to take into consideration to really fine tune that orientation, and that is magnetic declination. You may recall from the first video that we talked about magnetic declination being the difference between true north and magnetic north expressed in degrees. And you can find that information in the margin of your topo map, but if for some reason your map doesn't have that on it or it's an older map, you can also Google that information. If you haven't watched that first video though, you might want to check that out now. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at what causes magnetic declination. The Earth rotates on an imaginary axis. The very top of this axis is true north. The Earth's magnetic field is caused by currents of electricity that flow in the molten core at the center of the Earth, which is made up of nickel and other metals. This magnetic field also has an axis, but it doesn't line up perfectly with Earth's rotational axis. And to complicate things further, because the magnetic field is generated by liquid metal sloshing around in the core, magnetic north drifts slightly over time. This is one of the reasons it's important to use a current topo map, so you know what the current declination angle is in your area. So now let's look at how we account for that declination when we're navigating. So picking up where we left off in the last video, we have our map oriented to the terrain with red in the shed, which means our magnetic needle is in line with our orienting arrow. Now look at the declination diagram on your map and notice which side of true north magnetic north is on. On my map, magnetic north is to the left or west of true north. Also notice how many degrees of declination there are. Again on my map, it's eight. So now since my magnetic declination is 8 degrees westerly or to the left of true north, I'm going to rotate my compass bezel in that same direction, 8 degrees. Now making sure my compass base plate is aligned with the map's grid lines or the edge of the map, I rotate the map and compass again as a unit until red is in the shed once more. One thing to take into consideration is every time while you're navigating that you have to consult your map, you'll have to take declination into consideration and make that fine-tune adjustment. Now if the compass you're using, like this one, has an adjustable magnetic declination scale, you set it once for your region that you're navigating in and you don't have to worry about that anymore. You just put red in the shed and it's already taken that uh, difference into consideration. I'll show you how to set that on this compass. Okay, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do this very well holding the compass in my hand away from the camera like this and view, looking through the lens, but we'll see. Okay, so notice this group of small numbers on the inside of the needle housing on my compass. That is my magnetic declination scale. And you see over here it says west declination, here it says east declination. Now when I look at my topo map, it says that I have 8 degrees westerly declination. In other words, magnetic north is to the west of true north or to the left of it. So I have to move this scale so that the small red needle here at the bottom is going to be resting on 8 degrees westerly declination. So a lot of compasses that are out there provide a small screw in the back that you can adjust with a screwdriver to adjust declination. And that's pretty easy, but you have to have a really small screwdriver on you and it's easy to forget at home. So what these Brontons do is they let you hold the needle housing and just kind of force it like that but it's a little harder to get exactly right. So what I'm gonna do is each one of those tick marks is two degrees. So I'm gonna to try to set that now here on eight degrees westerly declination. And there it is. So by holding the needle housing and putting your thumb across the face of it and holding your finger in the center of the back, you can, you can rotate that scale. Now the advantage of this is once you have your magnetic declination set on your compass from now on, whenever you take a bearing, whenever you use your map, you don't have to worry about compensating or calculating that or checking your map to make sure you have it right again. All you have to do is put red in the shed when you orient your map, red in the shed when you get a bearing, red in the shed when you use a bearing, and everything's going to be fine. So now let's take a look at actually doing that on the map now that this compass has been adjusted to take into consideration magnetic declination. Okay, so with declination set, I rotate my bezel until north is facing at the top of my compass in line with my direction of travel arrow. I align the edge of my compass with the grid lines on the map and rotate everything as a unit until red is in the shed.
Okay, so now that we have our map oriented precisely to the train, let's take a look at how we're going to find our position on that map. And the first thing you need to know in order to do that is how to shoot a magnetic bearing to something that you can see in your environment. So let's look at that. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you how to shoot a bearing with both types of compasses that we've looked at so far, the Silva, which is not a siding compass, and the Brunton, which is a siding compass. And we're going to be shooting a bearing to my car that's uh, down there beside the road. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do with your compass is to rotate the bezel so that north is in line with the direction of travel arrow. Once that's finished, you're going to assume what's called a body hold. That means you're going to take your compass and you're going to hold it like this between two fingers and kind of cupping your hands as well. And you're going to hold it about at diaphragm height. And you're not going to rotate the compass, you're going to rotate your body as a unit. And again, you're going to remember to keep this compass away from as much metal and, and things that might interfere with the magnetic needle as possible. Once you have your hold like this, you're going to move your body until your direction of arrow travel, sorry, your direction of travel arrow is pointing at whatever you're shooting a bearing at. So before I shoot it at the car, just so you can see if I shot it at a tree that's near me, I would rotate my body. I would look at my direction of travel arrow and I would make sure that it's pointing at the object that I'm shooting a bearing to. Once it is, I'm going to rotate my bezel until red is in the shed again. And now I'm going to confirm, make any fine tune adjustments that I need to. And now, whatever degree reading is in line with my degree indicator or my direction of travel arrow, that's my bearing. So in this case, it looks like my bearing to that tree would have been about 61 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot the bearing towards my car now and see what I get. Okay, so I'm going to reset my compass by rotating the bezel till north is in line with my direction of travel arrow. I'm going to hold my compass like this between my two fingers, cupping my hands. I'm going to get a body hold and I'm going to rotate my body as a unit until my direction of travel arrow is pointing directly at the car. Also, you want to be careful not to pitch the compass left or right or uh, forward and back. You want to hold it as level as possible to let the needle move around the way it needs to. Okay, from here I'm going to go ahead and rotate my bezel until red is in the shed. Do any fine-tune adjustments if needed or at least confirm that everything's in line. And it looks like I am almost 180 degrees is my bearing. It's more like 179. So from here to my car, my bearing is 179 because that's the degree uh, mark that's lining up with my direction of travel arrow. Siding compasses are just a little bit different and they tend to be a little more precise. And the way that you use a siding compass, you can do a body hold with a siding compass also. There's nothing wrong with that. You have a direction of travel uh, indicator right on the compass, just like with the, the other types. But uh, once you rotate your bezel until north is in line with your direction of travel arrow, or your degree indicator, whichever is marked more clearly on your compass, you're going to assume a siding hole. You're going to tilt your mirror till it's about 45 degree angles to the um, needle housing there. You're going to hold the compass almost like a gun. You're going to cradle your hands like this. I like to run one finger along the edge and again you're going to be really careful not to let the compass pitch either way. You want to hold it as level as possible. And right through the compass, and I'll do a close-up shot of this too, right through the compass there's going to be a very small space that you can view through. And they probably have a little needle or something like that to indicate what you're actually uh, shooting a bearing towards. So you're going to get it up to a, about arm's length out and about face height. And you're going to close one eye and you're going to sight in on what you're shooting your bearing towards. So I'm sighting in on my car. And I'm going to try to make sure that I'm not pitching my compass any direction. Now I'm going to use the mirror to rotate my bezel and I can keep an eye on my um, direction of, I'm sorry my um, putting red in the shed I can see it all that with the mirror I can look at my orienting arrow and my magnetic needle through my mirror and I'm going to orient those until they're in line recheck that I'm sighted in and then I can also move this up now and so I get a little bit of a different reading with this one, and, and you're going to find that that's the case. Even if you have two identical compasses, same brands and everything, they'll give you a little bit of a difference. But this one looks like about uh, 175. About 175, and the other one I think gave me about 179. So this gives me a bearing of 175 when I use my signing compass to shoot a bearing to my car.
Okay, so now that we know how to shoot a magnetic bearing to something that we can see in our environment, I'm going to show you a technique called resection to find your location on a map. Now the idea behind this is that you would find at least two terrain features that are recognizable uh, that you can actually see in your environment. And you're going to shoot bearings to each of those and where those lines are going to intersect on your map is your location. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to orient our map to the terrain. Now I've got a map that I printed out for this park that I'm at today uh, from Caltopo. So we're going to orient our map to the terrain like we talked about before. Okay, so the first step is to put north in line with my degree indicator or my direction of travel arrow. Then I'm going to lay my compass on the map and I'm going to align the straight edge with one of the grid lines on the map. Then I'm going to rotate map and compass as a unit until red is in the shed. In other words, my magnetic needle is in line with my orienting needle or orienting arrow rather. I'm going to take into consideration magnetic declination, which on my map is 8 degrees. Let me scoot that into the frame a little bit, which is 8 degrees westerly. So I'm going to rotate it so that my north uh, orienting arrow is 8 degrees westerly. 2, 4, 6, 8. Make sure it's aligned with my map one more time with a grid line. And rotate it again so that red's in the shed. Okay, so now my map is oriented to this terrain. Okay, so I know because I've been walking around that I'm just to the east of a small body of water, so I'm, I'm suspecting that that's roughly where I am, and I can spot two man-made structures on either side of me across a road. So, so let's say that this was actually on a much larger scale. This is just going to be for demonstration, but if I was on a uh, hilltop here, I might be able to see that there's a body of water below me. Maybe there's a spur down here that seems like the contour of the land is in the same shape of, of what I'm looking at. And so if I believe that's where I am, I could shoot magnetic bearings to the edge of the water and to the bottom of the spur. Typically, you'd want something a little more easily defined, like a man-made structure, especially like a, uh, a radio tower or some railroad tracks. Things like that would be a lot easier to, to get a real good magnetic bearing on. But again, for this demonstration, I'm just going to be using the fact that I, I know that I'm at the bottom of a hill. I know that there's a body of water to the left of me or to the west of me, and I know that across the road there are two man-made structures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot a magnetic bearing to each of these structures, and I'll show you how to use resection then to figure out where I am on the map. Okay, so now just like we did before, in the last clip we're going to shoot a magnetic bearing to the building that I see on my right. So I get a body hold, and I want to be sure that I'm not moving my hands, that I'm rotating my whole body, and I'm going to rotate to the first object. And I'm going to get a bearing by moving red to the shed. Okay, once I get that bearing, I can draw it on my map and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so my first bearing to that first building is 11 degrees. I have my map still oriented to the terrain. This is the building or the man-made structure that I think I was shooting my bearing towards. So I'm going to put the edge of my compass on that right on the edge of it and then I'm going to rotate it so that the edge stays on that object but I'm going to rotate it until my magnetic needle is in line once again with my orienting needle so right about there and now I can draw a line back towards where I think I'm standing and when you do this on the map you want to keep your direction of arrow I'm sorry your direction of travel arrow pointing towards the way that you were actually looking when you shot your bearing so I've got one uh, penciled line there, and I'm going to shoot my second bearing. Then I'm going to use the same technique to get a bearing to the second object, the second building. And now I can draw that line on my map. Okay, so that bearing turned out to be 308. So now I repeat that same process. I keep my map oriented to the, to the terrain. I have my direction of travel arrow pointing to the way that I was actually looking when I shot my bearing. I shot a bearing at this man-made structure, so I'm going to align the edge of my compass on that and rotate the body of the compass again until red is in the shed. And realign it with the object, make sure everything's nice and fine-tuned. And then I can draw another line, another penciled line, along the straight edge of my compass. And where those two lines intersect 
is where I am on the map. And that's exactly where I actually am on the map because I'm just to the east of this body of water standing across the road from these two picnic shelters. So again, you would use that on a much larger scale if you were using this for real. That's just for a demonstration on how to use resection. Uh, so you may be taking a bearing from one hilltop to another or from a radio tower to a hilltop. Uh, you may be using a railroad track or a road or the edge of a body of water or something like that or a spur as your terrain features. And this is where terrain feature recognition really comes in handy and it's, uh, it's a skill that you just have to practice to get really good with it. Speaking of practice, here are some things that you should be able to do now. Go ahead and download a map from CalTopo. There's a lot of resources on YouTube about how to use this tool and it is very, very handy. Two, go ahead and buy or borrow a compass and then practice using that compass to orient your map to the terrain. And then of course, practice shooting bearings at objects. Okay guys, now that we looked at how to orient your map to the terrain, how to use your compass to shoot a magnetic bearing, and how to use that ability to find your location on a map using resection. In the next video, we're going to start looking at how to find out what your pace count is and how to use that to navigate through your environment. So I hope you like this video. If you do, please hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.